of the situation right now. <laughs> y'all, y'all thought y'all was in the black. This is the colored part of the situation, okay? Now listen, I want to give a very special shout out to Vive yes. for making this happen. For you can make some noise for Vive. <laughs> Got me here with my sister, my close friend, bringing all women together, God damn it, all of us, standing in solidarity, those chicks with and chicks without. Yeah. <laughs> oh so, my God. T.I. I love you too. I love you too. Give me some sugar. <laughs> hey, listen, hold on, sister, before we start. We are in Chocolate City, honey. We are in D.C. Maybe the men are here, and I want to get into me. The men are here, baby. Child. But do they want to get intimate with themselves? Wait a because minute. you see, Wait a minute. intimacy. Wait a minute. Intimacy ain't just physicality, right? Intimacy ain't just sexuality, right? Intimacy also requires emotional intellectualism about yourself. You mean to tell me all this time that man been hitting me from the back, he didn't love me? I'm sure he loved hitting you from the back now. But, but we was real intimate when it was going on. You know, T.S., I had to really realize over the course of time that I was misappropriating sex for intimacy. You, we, I you, thought you, they were exchangeable. I thought they were interchangeable. I thought, well, no, that's the, that's how you get intimacy is by doing this, right? Hold on, hold on. So you mean to tell me that sex ain't intimacy? I mean, I think sex can be intimate. But I think sometimes we think that because we are in this physical exchange that there is an emotional exchange happening and intimacy has a lot of levels to it. There is a physical intimacy happening just by the closeness. Let's get closer. All right. Closer than close. The closeness. But when we talk about intimacy, what we're really talking about is truth that can't be hidden from. Oh, okay. You just threw that to me, and I got to tell the truth. Tell it. Just recently, I was dating a man. Tell this. All right. Okay. You ready for the truth? Yes. I would. Because by the end of the relationship, I found out that that man was born a woman. But I'm fine. Why y'all got quiet in here? <laughs> the thing about it was, he didn't tell me that he was born female. Now, now, now listen. We were right. deeply intimate with each other. We hadn't had any sexual encounter because all my other relationships before that, I was circling, firking, and all the other words that you put in the situation. First, I was doing that first. And so I said, in this situation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in, I want to get to know and be intimate like this way instead of sexually. Well, but I got to know him really well as far as intimately. I wanted to know him intimately. Like, I, yes. wanted, to, I wanted to know them in the Natural way. Natural progression. No, the way that the Bible says, know him. <laughs> Period. I wanted to know him. Yes. And so when, when we got down to that, it kept being like, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 uh Double Dutch. Uh, uh, yeah, double Dutch. Oh, okay. I'm like, what do you Let me get in there. What's going on? You know? Is you got something? Cause you know, we Let's, living in a time where you know, one pill a day. One pill a day, you are. Right. Let's talk about it. You know, and I'm like, is you got something? Is we, what, what talk well, to me. He had talk nothing, and that was he, the It issue. was very much so, very much so. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Tell me. You were supposed to tell me. You didn't tell me. 
So what made this situation different for you in the fact that they didn't tell you? Okay, well, what made it different was that when we were talking about it, he kept explaining to me that if he did give me the dick. You see, there was a lie. How I would be already lost and how he would put the dick on me so good that you know how he was going to beat it up so good from the back that I was going to be looking for him in the daytime with a flashlight. Okay. Now that's what he told me. You can't do it. You that's what he told it. me. So you when they got out to be quiet, but you, don't lie But that's the thing. When you're bragging on some dick like that, I want it, okay? I want to have that. I want a salesperson. I want to have it. Yes. So I'm over here like, please give me some of that. I want to know what that be like. Please. I want to see what that's about. And so when they got down to giving it to me, there was nothing to give. It wasn't, it, you, I mean, I couldn't get that type of love. But he told me that that, that motherfucking scrap in that pocketbook could do all those things. I said, now, baby, I love you. I do. You done made me love you. But I need balls with that. He said, I balls on it, too. I said, okay. Uh, but you know what? You know what balls really would have been? It's the same as ovaries. It's the same as just courage, right? And we have to have courage in our intimacy. Because it's the bravery to be our full selves that allows us to actually have intimacy. Because it's the vulnerability that allows us to actually connect. And I was vulnerable enough after I had liked them for so long to say, you know what, man, you terrible failed relationships. Give this a try. And I went to him and I told him, babe, I got enough dick for both of us. <laughs> Can we work this bitch out? You know what he told me? What? I don't want no dick. I said, but I do. <laughs> he said, he ain't got what I need. I said, well, now we friends. Yeah. Now we don't go on dates. We go on outings. Well, I mean, listen, I, I would love for that to have worked out. And I was even willing to give it a try because I've never been with a the, with the trans man that has... Uh, what, wait. I'm telling my business. We, how many people in here? Put your phones down. Don't you put that on the internet. <laughs> I've never been with a, with a trans man. I've never dated a trans man. All of my relationships have been with, and here we go. I'm getting ready to say this word. I told you I don't want to say this word no more. With cisgender men. Sister, why I got the, why we, why I mean, why I had this bio men? Because the facts are the facts. Let's talk about that, really. Let's get intimate and talk about that. You as a you as a bio this woman. Oh, here woman. she go. You as a bio woman. It's the same thing. The words are the same. It's the same thing. I am a creature of logic. I can't I can't dance around with stupidity. You know that we in a, we're in an age of idiocy, and I feel like we done let the dummies run too long. Like, you can't. Be, and I was like, I don't know these people. <laughs> I said, can we call it a dinner with discourse? And they said, okay, we'll do that, we'll do that. So we have this dinner and there's me, there's Van Jones, there's Caitlyn Jenner, there's Anna Navarro, uh, and, and, and some other people, uh, um, Margaret Cho. And in this dinner in 2017, uh, 2018, um, I said in this dinner, Donald Trump is on a path to fascism. I said this in the dinner. I said it in the dinner, and they all got mad at me. They all got mad at me. And they were like, how dare you take it that far? You're being extreme. I said, no, I'm being clairvoyant, but. <laughs> and Caitlin was, was wholly offended. And uh, Van was like, Caitlin, what's wrong? And everybody was like, Caitlin, what's wrong? Caitlin, what's wrong? And she said, well, you know, I. No, no, she didn't say that. Then. She said, well, you know. <laughs> I'm an American citizen, and as an American citizen, I'm very offended that you would make such an assertion. And, you know, this is the way that we as Americans need to live. There shouldn't be government in our lives. And I said, well, Caitlin, I'm a black woman in America. The government has been in my life since my ancestors were brought here. 
And I, I said, it's odd to me that you would not be able to see this when the government didn't show up for trans people until 2 o'clock today. Oh. But what came out of that was the opportunity for people to see a conversation in an intimate space that they wouldn't have gotten to see in a more public space. And so what that what that says, though, is that we have to create intimate spaces for conversation if we want to actually see change. If we yeah. want to actually grow, and not just change in the world, but change in ourselves, change in our partnerships, change in love, right? Like, even when it comes to sex, like, we have to create that space to say, well, how do we make this sex better? <laughs> well, the only way that you're going to be able to make sex better is through pleasure. And so, with that being said, we're going to the stage and bring our pleasure principle on here. What have you done?